thank you again. Um, so I'll be happy to to share with you experiences uh, from Spaco Tanzania over the past uh, five or so years of the project. Uh, next, please. Next slide, yeah. So in terms of burden, I do not have to overstate it. We already know we have a huge burden of sickle cell disease in Sub-Saharan Africa. In Tanzania, uh, we rank fifth globally, only behind uh, Nigeria, India, Angola, and Democratic Republic of Congo uh, in terms of birth prevalence. So we are estimating around uh, 11,000 live births of babies in sickle cell disease. And the prevalence of trait is as high as 20% in certain locations that are more endemic for malaria, such as the um, northern part of the country. Babies who are born with uh, SS or mosaicus uh, sickle cell disease state uh, between 0.8 and 1.4% of all births. So Tanzania has been part of um, Sequel in Africa Consortium since inception in 2017. And currently uh, in this phase, um, the second phase we are funded uh, through a uh, U01 uh, mechanism that's uh, listed there. Um, on the right, I'm just showing uh, the countries that are currently in the consortium. In green are the new ones, and then in red are the old, um, the three countries from phase one, and then the, the blue um, boxes are the uh, coordinating centers. Next slide, please. So this is the photo from the very first uh, inception meeting of Sequin Africa Consortium that was done uh, here in, in Dar es Salaam way back in 2017. So it's, it's glad to see uh, all, of, all the visual uh, colleagues and to welcome the new, new colleagues uh, into the consortium. Next slide, please. So we have, um, in terms of operations, four major aims, the database, uh, standards of care, training and research. For the purpose of this presentation, I only cover the database aspect of it. And as we know uh, from morning presentations, we have new consortium targets uh, of total 34,000 uh, over the next five years. And in Tanzania, that will be, uh, 7,000, being 4,000 in the first phase and then 3,000 in, in the second phase. So um, the next slide, I'll just show you uh, experiences uh, with regard to the database here in Tanzania. So number one, in terms of enrollment, we were uh, lucky enough to complete our phase one target of 4,000. And then we are now already embarking on phase two target. Uh, where we have already enrolled 943 out of 3,000. So that's uh, one quarter almost, uh, uh, one, one third almost of the, of the target. And as you can see in, in breakdown, uh, our women majority of um, our patients are children, uh, reflecting many things. One of them is uh, probably, um, uh, just life expectancy, but also uh, exhaustion in, in care, I guess, uh, over time. So that's a lot of work to be done also in terms of in, 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 uh, encouraging adults to continue being in care. Um, what we have been doing from phase one is to, to be more, uh, to pay more attention on recording follow-up. And to date we have over, 12,000 follow up visits recorded for about 3,000 patients. So um, it's good. Uh, by average, you can say, you know, uh, over the last four years, everybody came at least once, so maybe once per year. So the frequency of, of attendance to follow up visit is something also that needs to be improved. Um, most of our patients do not have health insurance and it is expensive. So uh, as we shall see later in the presentation, not having insurance uh, may be a bottleneck also to access to certain care, care issues, uh, such as hydroxyurea. As you can see, only 715 patients are on hydroxyurea. 
So hydroxyurea uh, utilization is a major issue. Uh, there are many aspects of it, but I think one of them is, uh, is not having uh, insurance because to afford um, it is difficult. On the right is a photo of um, the Deputy Minister of Health by then, uh, Honorable Hamiski Bangala, uh, MD, uh, who was actually launching um, the sickle cell uh, disease health passport. So this is an innovative idea from Sparkle Tanzania in collaboration with uh, sickle cell disease uh, patient community self and there she's receiving uh, uh, and also collaborated with the current clinic Can you hear me? Hello? Can you still hear me well? Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so this one shows the enrollment sites. We started mostly in Dar es Salaam at the National Hospital and Regional Referral Hospitals. But over time, we've been able to expand to satellite sites and we are glad uh, this is working well. Um, the first one was Uganda Medical Center in Mwanza, in the lake zone here uh, in yellow. But we've been able to expand to other uh, sites. The current one in phase two are the ones circled in red here, Pwani and Zanzibar. So we are glad about that. But we've also been able to welcome on board Aga Khan Hospital, which is the first private hospital to join us. And it's a big hospital. They have a large network, so we are excited about this and we will see how it is. So as you can see, um, the areas in yellow and, 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 and green here are where we, we are there, sort of, either directly or being a catchment of, of our enrollment site. But the white area is, is where we are not there. And as you can see, it's a vast lands and peoples. And we hope maybe one day our goal is to see we can have you know, a, a truly national uh, reach. Thank you. Next. This is just a physical look of uh, the enrollment sites currently, uh, various areas. Next slide, please. Yeah, so in terms of data expertise, we have data uh, coordinator, Dr. Uh, Mr. Daniel Kandonga, um, who holds a Bachelor of Science in computer science and master of science in health informatics. He's been in the project for over four years, uh, doing data management analysis, and he's trained in dead car, big data uh, through SADEC, uh, and then research data management and uh, the scientific aspects of writing, writing proposals and, and, and the like. And he's assisted by Michael Msangawale, who is a BSc in health information technology has been a project for over two years now, and uh, is, is our main person for managing data related to the CONSA and newborn screening project. And he's trained already in REDCAP, health informa informatics, uh, research and proposal writing. And uh, we have a number of data clerks, uh, two in Dar es Salaam and one in Mwanza, and we work uh, on the satellites, we have trained nurses uh, who are now doing the data capture on, on red cap. Next, please. So in terms of infrastructure, we have a server which is donated by SADAC. We use it, this is where our red cap is hosted and we store data there also. Although we have an off store uh, storage facility also at the sickle cell uh, program at the university. Uh, in terms of connectivity, we have a high fiber uh, link, which has six Mbps up and downward, and is backed uh, by a wireless link. And this is provided by uh, a Tanzanian uh, 
facility known as Tanzania Education Research Network. Uh, the link is, is displayed there. We have completely transitioned to uh, electronic data capture thanks to uh, eight tablets that were donated by SADC, but we also invested uh, on our own uh, four new uh, tablets. And um, in terms of visual facilities, again, thanks to SADC for the video conference facility, but uh, we use GoToMeeting and Zoom that have capabilities for 150 or 300 participants. So, so the Zoom is uh, currently facilitated by the HT Africa Bionet. Thanks, next. So to date, um, in terms of phase two approvals, we've already obtained the ethical clearance from the university and recently from the National Health uh, Research Ethics Committee. Uh, who also uh, have given us uh, approval for data transfer with SADAC. So we have a duly signed and approved data transfer agreement uh, between Sparkle Tanzania and SADAC, now approved by the National Health Research Ethics Committee. So we are good to go in, in that aspect. Um, the way we enroll patients, we have various strategies. One is passive enrollment in existing and new sites. Uh, occasionally, we've done active surveillance of patients that we knew of uh, from the old um, umbilical cohort that we have contact, uh, we would call them, those who are not attending clinic. And then uh, we have been doing mass screening and newborn screening uh, as well through Ashkosa. So I'll, maybe I'll describe a little bit more of, of those. Next slide, please. So mass screening, uh, we started you will remember about two years or so, there was approval of uh, one of the first point of care tests, sickle scan. So we were lucky enough to get a donation of 20,000 tests from Biomedomics Incorporated. And we distributed them uh, countrywide to eight regions in the country. And we um, were able to, to um, do health uh, promotion, sort of uh, uh, community awareness through mass media, as you can see here on the photo. In the photo here, uh, Dr. Agnes Jonathan, who is our uh, project coordinator, together with Mr. Ms. Arafa, uh, having a, this was a radio uh, call to, uh, you know, have an opportunity to share uh, experiences and encourage masses for the mass screening. And uh, what we were able to do um, in return, we were able to, to identify 1,045 patients with sickle cell disease were now linked to care. So um, I think this has been a, a major game changer for us uh, because of the cost of the tests. It's currently about $5 or so, and you can deploy it uh, in the field, uh, unlike, you know, dependence on uh, HPLC or ectophoresis. Next, please. So newborn screening, uh, Tanzania is luckily again, one of the few countries in Sub-Saharan Africa that are part of ash concert. For us, we were able to uh, launch um, uh, newborn screening. This was a national launching. Uh, on the photo here is the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health um, inaugurating newborn screening services officially in Mwanza area, uh, which is a Sparkle enrollment site. So to date, we are in Dar es Salaam, in Amana, and Tameka Regional Hospitals, and then Mwanza and Hospital. And we are looking to slowly uh, expand to other hospitals uh, in the catchment area. The goal is to screen 50,000 babies over five years. Uh, because of the prevalence, we are estimating of 0.8%, then uh, screening that many babies, we are expecting to get about 400 babies with sickle cell disease. And this will be enrolled into uh, Sparkle Tanzania, uh, RedCap database, and, and being followed up. So, so this is one of the, of the ways um, we, are, we, are, we are going to do this. Um, 
for Zanzibar, we work with the Ministry of Health to see, because they have interest there, but they're not part of CONSA, to see if they can uh, solicit funding through other means. And we've been able to work with them and uh, develop the proposal that uh, we've submitted to the Ministry already. Next, please. So in terms of data quality uh, processes, um, the Red Cup database has a quality module, uh, which is used to, to query and resolve data issues. And then we have data access groups that are supported by SADC, uh, where issues related to, to data can be addressed. And then digital data capturing methods uh, using uh, a variety of means, uh, as I've said, but the health passport I mentioned earlier actually has a barcode and, and we can use it to, uh, to improve uh, data quality that way. We use tablets um, for data collection, as I mentioned, and then uh, data backup and storage is done uh, manually uh, using a facility within the sql cell program of the university and then automatically uh, using the, the server um, at telnet that hosts the the red cup. Next, please. So what have we learned? Uh, a number of challenges related to uh, the project, but care for sickle cell overall in the country. Um, one of the major issues is lack of confirmatory tests. So only a few hospitals have electrophoresis or HPLC in terms of and this is a major issue because patients who are saved in the catchment uh, have no means of confirming, or it takes a long time to transport samples to another uh, hospital that has the capability. So this causes delays in, in, in enrolling patients. Um, uh, the other issue I think which will be discussed in the course of the workshop is the issue of data elements and collect, collection of information. Um, we have expanded in terms of elements on the on the Red Cup for Spaco Tanzania, but the information we're able to get are very routine clinical information. Laboratory information, very few. Uh, and the main reason is the cost for, for those investigations uh, are high. And if patients are not on insurance, then uh, they can do you know, the very basic hemoglobin and, and clinical parameters. And, and, just a few lab labs, but uh, you know a complete blood count or you know renal functions, liver functions. These things are not routinely collected because, of course, um, sometimes patients move from one facility to another, and that risks uh, uh, double double entry of data. But our team is trained um, and has a lot of support from SADAC to make sure uh, during cleaning uh, those issues are identified. Uh, and then, uh, as I already mentioned, enrollment into health insurance is a problem and therefore access to hydroxyurea is a challenge. And then the attendance to follow up visit and uh, the issues of public awareness. So what have we done to address this? Um, we really need to identify, uh, to enhance identification of patients. So. We are doing mass screening again. We are still doing it whenever we have the resources. The newborn screening, uh, we are glad it's going on well um, through Ash Consa, but Sparkle Tanzania is also uh, contributing uh, resources into that. We are partnering with governments to support availability of resources at health facilities. And this speaks to sickle cell confirmation, but supportive investigations, as I mentioned earlier. And then, uh, in mitigating issues of uh, data quality, we do refresher trainings uh, to our coordinators and, and, and data clerks. And then we encourage patients to enroll in health insurance uh, as, as a means of uh, affording these uh, investigations, but also hydroxyurea. As a new thing, uh, we, we, we are going to start uh, SMS system in order to remind patients to come for scheduled visits and then therefore boost uh, attendance to follow up visits. And then we continue with uh, health education and public awareness campaigns through mass media. Next slide, please.
Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is what I was saying. Uh, it's a new system. We proposed this in Sparkle 2, which was supported by, by uh, NIH. Um, so what we have done so far, we've um, gathered a team of, of young people, our data coordinators uh, have played a central role in this uh, together with other colleagues to develop a system that is integrated in the local mobile network providers to provide SMS to these are non-smartphones, non the, the usual phone that everybody has. Um, and we think this one will increase the reach uh, of patients. You're going to use this. This is almost near completion. It's, it will be deployed any minute, any time. Um, I think tomorrow, the day after, our data co um, coordinators will present this into the consortium. But we are going to use this to send reminders for clinic attendance. Uh, we've seen the potential of using this also to provide health education to patients. Uh, on anything of interest, hydroxyurea, for instance, uh, among others. So this is something that uh, we, are, we are really proud of. The next one, please. Yeah, in terms of research, uh, the main research area that we proposed in terms of cohort studies, uh, uh, fetal hemoglobin study, hydroxyurea and immune study, um, kidney dysfunction study, and then implementation research, newborn screening project uh, to look into uh, screening babies at, at point of birth, whether that's during immunization visits, uh, hydroxyurea study. Uh, and there's one potential PhD student in this, and then malaria chemoprophylaxis, looking at uh, acceptability of SP versus DP, um, but it will also be a nested clinical trial of the two drugs. Next slide, please. Yeah, so the, here is the team, not uh, the entire team, but some of the members who have done uh, all the work and we are, we are really um, um, proud of the team. Next, please. Okay, so here's to say thank you again uh, to NHLBI for the funding and uh, MUHAS and SQL in Africa and everybody for your attention. Thanks very much. <laughs>